What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. Following, supporting your boy, man. The grind don't stop. You did crip shit, man. You know what I'm saying? We gang gang out here, man. Anytime you can be gang gang, come join your boy. Let's get lit in this bit, man. Um, come watch these videos with your boy. You know, we turning up, man. You know, we know we be inside to watch these videos and come on YouTube and, and, and turn up with y'all, man. Um, you know, the grind don't stop, man. Free Palestine and Congo. Oppression is real around this bitch, man. Um, keep on on. Uh, Talking y'all what y'all gotta talk, you know, freedom of speech, man. We gotta talk what we can talk, man. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers, they gonna try anything in their power to try to stop us, man. But at the end of the day, y'all ain't got us, man. Hey, support your boy, continue to grind, and never give up on y'all dreams, man. And, and, and have faith, man. But come to this black and green white, we in this bit. Alright, boom. Today, two motherfucking day, straight hood outside crook, man. Gang! Gang, 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 gang! Alright, man. Now, you know we've been covering this for a minute, man. You did. And uh, Mikey Williams, the next up and coming superstar. Um, you know he's been in altercations, man. Where um he you know he I think he got locked up and he almost he he, he had to go to court. And he was facing like eight counts and years in prison for um. A gun situation, man. Now, you know, we fuck with Mikey Williams. We've been watching Mikey Williams since the beginning of what he's been doing this shit, man. And, you know, he was like the next star up behind LaMelo Ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of these homegrown superstars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was, a, I think mean, he put up like 71 points in, in high school and it went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mikey Williams always, you know what I'm saying, was an elite basketball player. He, he was top tier type shit, man, and, you know, it's unfortunate how certain act incidents, you didn't get him into trouble where uh, it can almost ruin his basketball career. Now, there's been a lot of players, and including his parents, to where, you know, certain in 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 incidents, before they even become a, a pro, where they ruin their basketball career, and, and a, lot of, so, a lot of times these players have uh, a chance to become one of the best players of all time, but... You did it just ego and other situations to where, you know, if they fucks it up. And, you know, we don't want to see these young superstars, you know what I'm saying, fuck up on the opportunity to become the best, get the bread they deserve, and be in the destiny that they need to be in. Now, Mikey Williams, man, you know, he been in this trouble where, you know, he it was a shooting incident where uh, he got into it with these people over beef. Um... Now, I don't know what exactly the beef. Like, it was like over drama, baby, because, you know, he, he went to Memphis and somebody put up to his crib. I guess people were sneak dissing him. And uh, some people came up to his crib, and I don't know if he was expecting them or he wasn't really fucking with these people. And, you know, he, he, he eventually bust, let off shots. And so nobody was injured, you dig, and crib. So, you know, he they were trying to get that nigga like eight counts of, um like, with, with deadly weapons and shit like that, but uh, you know, so he went to trial. You know, we we, we all went on trial to see what's gonna happen to Mikey Williams, man. You know, nine times ten, nothing's probably gonna happen to Mikey Williams. First off, cause he's super famous. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of money on. You know what I'm saying? Money on and fame does speak sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're in a, a, a tough situation with all that damn talent. And so you know, uh, you know, we were supporting him the whole time, man. Uh, and you know, his court date came up. And, you know, we, like I said, we was ready. We were waiting for the court date to see what's going on, man. And they finally came down to it. And, yeah, he won. 
So Mikey Williams won his court day, man. You know, um, they tried to get him out, but you know, thank Yahweh. You know, people. Get, got a change of mind, and I think they only tried to nigga like with one count. So we got what's going on, man. Hope y'all enjoy these videos. Um, make sure y'all like and subscribe, you bitch up, and yeah, let's get into it. By the University of Memphis, is Williams will need to complete anger and gun safety courses by August. If he does that, the charge will be reduced to a misdemeanor. All glory to God. I'm just happy that I made it out of this situation, you know. But I'm just excited to get back to the court. So you guys, I want to bring y'all this video on Mikey Williams and talk about everything that's currently going on with his court situation. So check this out. Just recently, sources came out that Mikey pleaded guilty to one count of making criminal threats during his latest court hearing, which means he won't face any jail time due to his incident that happened back in March. And he also would have to complete 80 hours of community service while attending therapy, anger management and gun and safety classes before his sentencing date, which is on August the 24th next year. So basically, once he completes everything that was issued to him before his next court date, while not getting in any more trouble, the judge then will reduce his felony charge to a misdemeanor. So Mikey is honestly in a really good position right now because he is currently a free man and he also gets to possibly return back to Memphis and start off the college year. The University of Memphis has not responded yet just because the news just came out a few hours ago, but they should be making an announcement very soon on what their plans are moving forward with Mikey suing up for the team this year. So I'm very happy for Mikey just because this has been a long and serious case for him. He literally stayed grounded and he also got a good lawyer that defended him extremely well and they both stood their ground the entire time. Even though the victims were trying their absolute hardest to get Mikey, and on top of that, they were trying to add more charges on him as well. But Mikey and his lawyer didn't let up and they also ended up winning the case so far. And to be honest, it's just so wild to me when I think about everything that's been going on throughout these past few months. Ever since this entire situation happened back in March, you could tell bro had a big dark cloud over his head because he didn't know on how everything was going to play out for him as in his career being over or not. And it's honestly crazy to me because I remember when he had a conference meeting with Puma by debuting his new signature shoes that are called the Dago Baby PEs. Basically, before anybody knew on what was going on, I knew something was up with him because during that entire day, he literally had his head down and was looking extremely upset the entire time. He wasn't engaging himself with his fans or anything and I knew right then and there that something was going on with him. Because around that time, I remember just thinking to myself like, why are you not happy that you are debuting your new signature shoes like you're literally making history right now by being one of the youngest athletes to sign with Puma. So I was already curious on what was going on with him because it was just so obvious that something happened and he had some things on his mind. His body language and everything was just showing it all by just looking down the entire time and just playing with his microphone when he should be energetic and happy while talking to the fans. And on top of that, Right when Wallow started talking about his experiences and giving motivational speeches, as in he was talking directly to Mikey, that's when I knew something was really up because bro was looking extremely hurt for real, as in he knew he messed up. Then of course, right after that, he then decided to record a video on his Instagram story while listening to music and being in his feelings. And he put, how the ace you diss me and you look up to me, you know me. And you could tell that his vibe was just off because he was clearly sending a message to someone. Then literally a few days after that, he ended up getting arrested. Then that's when all the madness started, as in everyone finding out on what happened and just talking down on him, basically saying that his career is over. And bro has literally been dealing with all of that since April until now. So Mikey really has been going through a lot for real. That's why I just been trying to make videos to give my support and show him that people like me still rock with him because everyone makes mistakes. No one is perfect in this world besides God. And him being a young celebrity basketball player with a future, of course, people are going to expect him to make the right decisions and don't get in any trouble, which is understandable because he has a bright future ahead of him as in him possibly making it to the league. But just know things happen. Definitely when you're young and lit, people will literally try to put you in situations that you never intended to be in just because they know that you have a lot to lose. And that's why you have to be careful on who you're around, the females you mess with, and also the decisions you make as well. 
because Mikey really could have avoided this, but he clearly was scared and had anger problems as well. And that's not a good mix to have, as in being fearful and angry at the same time, because your emotions will literally take over you and make you do something that you never meant to do in the first place. And that's exactly what happened to Mikey. So I'm happy that he is finally back on track and going in the right direction. All of this was just a minor setback for a major comeback. Like I said in my last video that I made on Mikey, I literally look at him as a little brother. That's why I always joke around with him just by making funny videos about his relationships and everything because I know exactly what he is going through for real. Just recently, a video came out right after he got out of court and you could tell that he was extremely happy for being free and he also can't wait to get back on the court. So Mikey just got to stay locked in, keep the main thing the main thing, go ahead and do what you got to do by doing your community service hours and taking those classes. And hopefully, once the judge reduces charge to a misdemeanor, all he has to do is pay a little fine and he'll be good to go like nothing ever happened. So I definitely want y'all to leave your comments and opinions below on how you feel about this. I thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you press the notification bell. T-Game, we out. Check it out. Mikey Williams beat the case. Um, as expected, he avoided jail time. Even He even avoided probation, you know, which is good. So happy he avoided both of those. Just the full and final details of the court hearing he had. And I'll get into, you know, if he plays or not this year in Memphis. So Mikey Williams, he pleaded guilty to a single count of making criminal threats in connection with a non-injury shooting outside um, his home. As part of the plea, he has to attend conjugate behavioral therapy, gun safety, and anger management classes. And um, he also has to complete 80 hours of community service. So if he successfully completes all the conditions of the agreement and he has no violations, the charge would get reduced to a misdemeanor. So basically until after he completes everything he's supposed to complete, then the charges would get reduced simply to a misdemeanor, which is crazy. You know, he went from eight felony charges to potentially, you know, now misdemeanor, right? So, and also as part of the plea, uh, he's not allowed to have a firearm for the next 10 years. So he has a gun restriction for the next 10 years that's been placed on his record. So he came out with a huge W, you know, his, his lawyer did a great job for him. So, you know, hopefully he learns from the situation, get back out there on the court. Now, as far as Memphis, I probably, I still don't think he plays this year, Um, if I had to guess it, but I wouldn't be surprised if um they figured out a way to get him on the floor this season um i think for him it'll probably be smarter to maybe try to red shirt come in next season you know try to say you're you know say you're not just thrown in there but you know on the flip side like Bronny's about to play too so the difference between him and Bronny is you know Bronny been with usc this whole time uh he's you know he knows the playbook knows how they want to play he knows what's going on so he would have a better transition than um mikey would you know for his own sake like i said i think he i would red shirt if i were him and come back the next season i feel like around this time of the year going into december and january is when um the well, one the coach already has his rotation set and two this is kind of like the time they're really in grind mode trying to get wins because you gotta you gotta get a lot of these wins you want to get as many wins as possible before you get in the conference play and you know memphis they have a they have a decent team uh they're they're fairly they're an older team so him already being out i don't really see how like he could come in and just make like an impact when you know they're, they're already pretty good at the guard spot you know with caleb um with caleb mills and jq i think for him if i were him personally i would try to red shirt you know train you know get a feel from um what he's supposed to be doing next year try to learn from like guys like jq was a perfect i think jq was the perfect mentor for him because he's been and he's been in college for five years he knows what it takes to be a good college guard so he could put him on game i'm like yo this this how you do this and that you know this what i would do in this situation like he'll put him on a lot of game on how to be like a terrific college guard then going into the next season he'll dominate because he know what he's supposed to do so I think he has like a lot of good vets who already been through the whole college game that can make him ahead of, you know, a, a lot of the guards already in college. So I expect him to try to play this year, even down to Bronny. Bronny's case is way different. I think Bronny's good regardless. I think like with Bronny, he's going to get a shot in the NBA regardless of anything. I don't care if Bronny averages two points in college. He, he's going to get a shot in the NBA just because before LeBron retires, we just have to see him and one of his kids, you know, play against each other in the NBA. That's going to be so much money. And, you know, with the type of career LeBron has had, that, that would be so legendary. And we all know, let's let's be real, like, it's about money, right? Like, they want to make as much money as possible. Yes, you know, it's, everyone has a love of the game, but they try to make money at the end of the day. Bronny and LeBron on the same floor, and LeBron's going to be in, like, year 24, 23, 25, whatever year he's in. That's going to bring in so much money. Like, you know how much money that will bring in for the NBA? You know, so 
that's definitely gonna happen either Bronny Bryce one of them is guaranteed going to the NBA or at least getting a shot one of the teams in the NBA is gonna take a shot you know because they they want that bread right so he's he's straight regardless Mikey's case like if he fumbles in college that's it you know like he's just gonna be another one of those like high school phenoms that like he was you know this in high school and then shit didn't work out in college right so but um so I think him and Bronny's situation is different so if I was him out red shirt uh, try to learn from jq who's already been in college for five years try to learn for caleb mills who already been to i think florida state he already been to houston florida state i think memphis is now his last stop so try to learn from the guys who already been there so that you can come in next year dominating because if he does what he's supposed to do regardless when he gets back on the floor if he dominates like he's supposed to he could have a shot you know because mikey's a cash cow like mikey brings in like people want to watch him play you know, rather you hate him or like him like he's somebody people want to watch right so uh you'll rather be out there when you dominate and you don't want to be one of those guys who you were nice in high school and then you just become a bum in college like if he if he goes into college killing like rob dillingham's doing right now then you gonna like his name was gonna his name will stay hot and he's gonna get a look for the nba can't really really compare Bronny and mikey but regardless of anything happy you no know, he beat these charges you know happy he's getting another shot you know hopefully he can stay out of trouble stay locked in you know don't end up in no bad situations complete what they told him to complete and get back on the floor y'all let me know what y'all think about everything y'all think he gets on the floor and what y'all expectations for him when he does get back on the floor and um you know as always it's your boy hefe out it's coach ryan rizuki and i know i've been incredibly busy since we opened up our second gym but i promise to get back onto the youtube grind and provide you guys with some of the best content so that's what we're doing today we are talking about two of the most important ways to finish the basket and this will help you to become a much better score. So stay tuned and I'm gonna give you the secret to two of the best finishes. And once you develop these two things, it'll be pretty hard for anybody to guard you. Okay, so step one, before we get into any of the finishes, you must be able to use the right and the left hand. If you can't finish with your left hand, which a lot of players struggle with, you need to develop that right now. So obviously you see Mikey and JJ get into the basket, they have no problem finishing with the right and finishing with the left. Now there's this one really cool secret about finishing. I'm gonna show you three clips and let's see if you can figure it out. Beautiful ball fake, spin move, up and underneath. Oh. To just get to the... Did you catch it? In all of those finishes, there was a show. Just like in JJ's here, you can see the ball goes high and then it goes out to finish. In Wemby's, the ball goes high and then it goes around. And then in Chet's, it goes into the defender, brings it back to the shoulder, and then he's able to finish nice and soft. But why does this happen? Why do players do this? The best answer I can give you is positioning and commitment. The most important thing is to show the basketball and the defense will overcommit towards it because they are jumping where the ball is, but not where the ball will be. You can show it to the outside, straight up, or even towards the defense. But all of these force the defender to commit towards the ball and then it allows you to choose where you want to place it next. So if you have the athletic capabilities to do so, Adding this little pump towards the defense will guarantee that you get a bucket or free throws every single time. Matherin goes inside, gets into Williams. And... My favorite example is this one by Benedict Matherin and of course the ones by Chet Holmgren as well. But you see Kyrie have a ton of these where he's able to get a lot of and ones or he's able to finish acrobatically around the rim and he's able to use his right and his left hand. Whether he's showing the basketball towards the defense, up into the air, or even to the outside and then finishing with the inside. But this is one of the biggest and most important staples and it's actually really easy to work on. Set a goal to make a certain amount in a row. Could be five, could be seven, could be 10, maybe more. But the idea is to attack the basket. Let's say you show the ball straight up and then finish with the right. Do the same thing, finish with the left. Then show it to the outside and finish with the inside. Then show it to the inside and finish with the outside. And if you do this enough with both hands, it's gonna be super easy for you. So that's the best way to work on it. But keep setting that goal a little bit higher. No skill is mastered overnight, and this is definitely advanced, but let's look at something that's not as advanced. Contact is one of the most important things in basketball, but you should never rock the ball side to side when attacking the basket and there's a defender on your hip. There's so many better ways to protect it. I'll show you a few examples here. You can see in this example as I drive right, the defender tries to reach in from the left hip, but because I don't rock the ball side to side, I hold it high, protect it, and finish. Steph Curry does something similarly here as MPJ tries to reach in from that left hip and steal the ball, but Curry holds it by the shoulder and the chin and then is he's able to finish nice and soft at the rim. Now when it comes to contact, this is one of the greatest examples you'll ever see. Curry could drive straight to the basket, but that's a bad idea. Instead, he drives towards the help side defender, finds the contact early, and that allows him to have space to finish at the rim. 
A lot of coaches and trainers don't emphasize this enough, but look how Juju finds and initiates that contact. This is what the best scorers in the world do, so I highly suggest that you start getting on this trend. This one's tougher to see, but Steph Curry sticks his left arm in the chest of Harrison Barnes and extends that finish out with his right hand as far as he can. It is not illegal to pin your defender using your shoulder or your forearm as long as you don't push off that defender. You're using your body to occupy and eat up the space. The best way to finish at the rim is to understand the angles that you need to take to the rim, where you are in relation to the rim and where your defender is in relation to the rim. And this way you can always put yourself in the best position to score. Just look at this drive for example. There's a ton of contact as the defender is trying to push the offense player outside of their line, but Mikey's able to stay nice and tight and get exactly where he wants to. Same for me, for instance, I'm driving in and I'm able to veer into the contact or JJ who veers into the contact and then we extend the basketball away from the defense. Basketball is a contact sport and just like with dribbling, you have to learn the concept of defender, body, ball and keeping the defender away from the basketball by using your body to shield it. See how the extension is here and this next example by Kalen is the best one. Keeping the ball on the right side, moving the defender with the left side of our body and then even extending it out to the right side. Even here in this contact finish, ball goes up and then is extended out to the right side. Learning to have your body in the way to protect the basketball is one of the most important things. And then also learning how to extend the basketball and have that good, nice, soft touch with either the right or the left hand. So let's work together to put a perfect workout together for you so you can learn how to do this with both hands. All right, this one's gonna be a bit long of a list, but I think it's gonna be one of the best ways that you can develop this touch and then eventually you're gonna to have to move on into a lot of that finishing with contact. And that's gonna be developed through a lot of one-on-one -on -one or practice with dummy defenders or real defenders. All right, so here's the workout. First, we gotta work on what's more difficult. So if you're a right-handed player, let's get that left hand down so we develop it first. We're driving to the basket, we're making 10 left hand layups in a row. Now, if you're more advanced, I want you to really focus on how you make these left hand layups. Some with the backboard, some without the backboard, straight down the middle, on the opposite side, some with a little touch where you put it up underhand or overhand, some inside hand. There's so many different ways that you can challenge yourself to make left-handed layups. But if you can make 10 in a row like this, that's going to be the goal. And then eventually we're going to start to add that little pump fake and we want to make 10 in a row with that little show and finish like we talked about earlier, left hand. Then once you make your 20 left hand, we're going to do the same thing with the right hand. Every great player has a great imagination. So this is a total of 40 layups of course, in segments of 10 in a row, 10 in a row, 10 in a row, and 10 in a row. Right, I understand it's gonna be difficult, but that's how you challenge yourself and that's how you improve as a player. If you struggle with the creativity, then it's best to timestamp some of the moves that you saw here and try to work on that exact scenario. Try to imagine whether you need to put down cones or shoes or something, the defenders exactly where we have them placed. Try to go through the exact same move and work on that exact same finish. If you can feel that, that's gonna help you to finish when a real defender is there and live. And that way you can work on the timing correctly, how you hold and separate the ball from the defense, how you shield the defender, or how you get into those different pump fakes to force the defense to play at a certain spot. That way you can finish at a different spot. These are two of the best finishing tips that I can give you. And I want you guys to work on these today. And then I'm gonna give you guys some more with different contacts and different options to be able to get to the basket when there's multiple defenders or taller defenders. Of course, the floater is a great option. and. We'll work on that mid-range and three-point shot as well so you guys can become more dynamic scorers. Let's work on this one today and timestamp any that you see that you need to work on. And I promise if you leave a comment, I'll do my best to get back to you.
We begin our 8 o'clock hour with this breaking news. LeBron James' son, Brawny, is recovering this morning after suffering cardiac arrest at USC yesterday. TMZ reports it happened just before 9.30 in the morning during workouts at the Galen Center. The James family released a statement this morning saying Brawny is now out of the ICU. He's in stable condition. In the statement, the James family thanked USC's medical and athletic staff for their work. They've asked for respect and privacy. The 18-year-old has committed to play for the Trojans in the fall with plans of entering the NBA draft when he becomes eligible in 2024. Again, he is in stable condition. Bronny James has been cleared by doctors for a full return to basketball for months after suffering a cardiac arrest. And the Southern California freshman is expected to make his collegiate debut soon. A James family spokesperson said in a statement Thursday, that the 19-year-old will have a final evaluation with USC staff this week and resume practice next week. He will be able to play in games soon after, it said, the heart specialists have cleared him, Coach Andy Enfield said Thursday after practice. And now it's a matter of getting him back on the court next week hopefully to begin working out. With the team full contact, Lebron James it's a proud moment. Big time excitement from our family for Bronny. And now for USC as well because it's something that he's been working towards for the last 12 weeks. Lebron said, and for him to get the clearance for him to do what he loves to do and go back to being back with his teammates and putting on a uniform and things of that nature. It's very gratifying for sure, Lebron said Bronny handled rehab well. We had great doctors along the way the whole time telling us that they believe things will work out for us in our favor, so Bronny took care of his business, while Bronny will be a welcome addition to USC's rotation. He'll need time to acclimate to game action. He has been on the court for pregame warm-ups twice in recent weeks. We all, I'm sure, are thankful for the news surrounding Bronny James, LeBron James' eldest son, who, remember, he had suffered cardiac arrest uh, playing basketball last year, I guess, or earlier this year, um, several months ago. And um, now he is clear to play and will be playing for USC. Rob G, fill us in on all the uh, specifics. Sure. So you touched on it. He suffered cardiac arrest during a team workout in July and actually had to undergo surgery to repair what the James family referred to as a congenital heart defect. So it was pretty serious. There was a moment there where maybe not in the family, but in the widespread sports media landscape, people were worried if he was ever going to play basketball again. Right. Because when you hear he passed out on the collapse on oh, the court, scary. it's really scary, right? And thankfully, he had surgery, making a full recovery, and he is expected to be activated at USC here in the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe up to a month. And all of which led to LeBron James being asked about it yesterday following their blowout loss to the Thunder. And LeBron said not only is he excited to see his son back on the court, that he's willing to skip a Laker game to see his debut. Take a listen. I'm looking forward to his first game whenever whenever he's cleared and whenever he's ready to have his first game. I already told my teammates that if they play on the same day we planned, then I'm going to have to catch them next game. So, huh? yeah, I told you I'm, I told you I'm going to play. Uh, <laughs> family over everything, champs. I love y'all. <laughs> Rob, your thoughts? Um, didn't sit well with me. And I, and I get it. Family over everything. Everybody has families. Everybody has families. Uh, everybody has missed. You make commitments. Uh, Chris, did you go to all your daughter's recitals and everything that they had? Not no, all you of didn't. Them. No, because you because of, but not all. No, of them. I know. But that, that's my point: is that you you can't do it all, and it's not. I'm not being insensitive. I don't have kids. You know that. I have nieces and nephews, and I missed a lot of stuff that in their lives that I wish I could have gone to. You know. Uh, my nephew was a pretty good basketball player. I couldn't go to all of his games. I was working. I had commitments. Um, and so with the kid, and I get it. I mean, this is this is probably, you know, a little different because of what Bronny went through, Chris, with the heart situation. Right. 
uh, so that might be the part of just being out there to encourage him on that day. Um, and maybe if it was kind of presented that way, maybe I would have would have had a little different effect to me. But you know, I had this same thing with uh, Jason Tatum when he took off for a Celtics game for his five year old son's birthday, and and I I just I, I again. A five-year-old's birthday party could happen on any day. The kid, Chris, do you remember your fifth birthday party? I don't think you My did. fifth? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was all the way live. Yeah, Cincinnati, right. Cincinnati, Ohio. Place. Yeah, all right. My friend Calvin there, <laughs> Keith, you know. <laughs> I, I remember mine. Four, it was like 90 years ago, my fifth birthday. But anyway, <laughs> um, I don't remember it. I remember the picture because I had a five crown right. on my head. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> right. remember the party. But you get my point. No, I get that. It, I, it, it is is that this is one of those tough situations where I don't know if it affects the Lakers and and uh, will it cost them a game? You know what I mean down the yeah. road. I, I mean, you just it's don't cost know. them a game. The way they right. they are barely serviceable when LeBron's there. Um, I, I I'm gonna say a few things about it, Rob. One, people are different. That's number one. Um, I've met guys, Rob, and. I don't know if you had a story similar to this, but um, I remember meeting a reporter that I knew, mm -hmm. and not a big time. I'm not, you know, he wasn't like working at a big time publication, but he was, I think, working at a smaller paper, but covering, you know, in the NBA playoffs. We were all covering, and his sister died, like during the playoffs. And he was still covering the games. Now the games. Now I would have not been doing that if my brother died during God the playoffs. Forbid. Yeah, uh, yes, God forbid. You know, yeah. I would have taken off to be at his funeral, or you know, but he went right through it. So that's why I say, you know, people yeah, people are people deal with stuff differently. Chris. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I, I don't know. I think little... you had something similar to that, right? Yeah, my, my mom food? died. I did first take. My mom died. I told Skip and Dave Broski, our boss, Chris, at that time. Right. After the show. And they looked at me She like, died during she, the show? She, she, had, she had died the day before. And nobody okay. knew. And I was, you know, it, it was right before I was supposed to. I was working, and then, I, you know what I mean, I think I had to work one more day, and then we got the weekend, and I was going to go to New York and the family. And for me to work through it, she would have wanted me I, to just do what you have to do and then handle everything. And obviously, I took off the funeral. It wasn't like I'm not going right, to Right, right, right. But you it wasn't like... week or something. Yeah, like and when my dad died, I was in Cincinnati. <clears throat> and when my dad died, Chris, uh, I, was on a, I was covering the Reds, and I went to work because I was living in Cincinnati by myself, okay, by myself. I had a girlfriend, right. but I was, you know, on my own. Right. And I remember going to the game thinking that I was okay, looking okay, right? Like, I'm just right. going to work through it and then go to the funeral. My dad was – the funeral was in Florida and all that. And I get into the – Lou Pinella was the manager – I get into his office. I sit down, Chris, in my normal seat, you know, the pregame with the right, manager. Right. Lou Pinella looks right at me, stares at me, and he says, son, what's wrong? That's what he said to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? He said, what's wrong? And I said, my dad, dad, my dad died last night, but blah, blah, blah. He got up from his desk, came over to me, and gave me a hug. I I'll never mm -hmm. forget that. I thought I was putting on a... Good face, right, you know right, what right, I mean? Right, 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 he, right. He said it immediately. I didn't even open my mouth. Wow. And he knew that something had happened. Yeah. It, it, so like we said, people are different, number one. Um, I'm with you. I, I, on the Jason Tatum thing, I mean, the that birthday, birthday party yeah, is birthday is Because especially when you're as wealthy as these guys are, you can bring your son out. I mean, I know with my daughters, my daughters are 25 now. Rob, and this is no exaggeration. You may have friends or, or nieces and nephews that were similar. They didn't have birthdays. They had birth months. Mm -hmm. Not purposely, but it was like they had the party Celebration, right. at home with the, the friends, and then they had the party at school, 
And then they had the party at home with another group of friends. It was like ridiculous. It was like three weeks of it or, or three parties in, in two weeks or something like that. And so you could, if you're in that situation, you can fly your son out or after, if you don't have a day, you don't have a game, you can go straight there, hang out with him, do something really special. Um, without knowing if there were any extenuating circumstances, that's to me, you can do that. As far as LeBron and Bronny, Rob, I, I think you mentioned it. Why I'm not, I have no problem with it. Number one, because of Bronny's situation with the cardiac arrest, with the questions about whether he would ever play a college basketball game or any type of basketball game again. That, to me, makes this different. Like, I, I don't know if... I'm not saying the answer is different. I have no idea. But if Bronny had not suffered cardiac arrest and he was just starting the season like everybody else, and it was... I don't know that... I, I'm not sure LeBron would take off, See, you know, I, and go to that game. And that's game. what I said. That's why I'm conceding, Chris. But he didn't kind of talk about that. It was just like, oh, I told my team I'm not going to be there family first. Right. He, he may it, have assumed it's understood, you right. know, because of Bronny's But if he would have said, given what my son's been through, I need to be there for his first. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, that's the – Right. That, that would have been – I think that that's a, what he – without knowing exactly because we haven't talked to him. Right. I think that's the situation. But doesn't it sound different that way? Yeah, yeah. If you, But, but again, I, Rob, my feeling is most people – would understand that. Now, you didn't take it that way, and that's fine. But to me, it was like, it's understood. If anybody yeah, that knows what he I went through. I didn't take through, it that way. Yeah, I, I totally take it that way. Um, and so, in this situation, I'm fine with it. I, I also will throw this in, Rob. Uh, I'm going to throw in a couple things. One, LeBron, I, I, I feel differently about him, honestly, being 38 years old, about to be 39, in his 21st season, like, for instance, I don't want to hear game or low management from any other players. Him? In his 21st year? Yeah. You need a day off, man, take it. I, I just, because of his age and his, you know, where he's at in his career, I feel a little different about him versus the other player. And then players, and then I'm gonna throw this in too. And I don't, I don't like feeling this way, but it's just how I feel. Rob, unfortunately, because of the last, I don't know, seven years or so, whatever it's been, of of big time low management. I hate to say it, like I said, I don't like feeling this way, but I feel like he missing one game. What's the big deal? Is one deal dudes miss the average superstar is gonna miss seven games but, that but he didn't need to miss. But, but and again, I don't I I I I I'm not saying I like feeling this, but I've been conditioned now over these last seven years that it's like I man, he only missing one game. But but you know, I, I hear it's, you. it's unfortunate, but that's that's kind of where we be gotten in NBA. Right. But the pushback again becomes here we go. More players like the fans don't matter. I bought tickets for this game. You know what I mean? Like, like if you're a fan, and Chris, obviously there are people going to understand like the family situation and what right. Bronny's been through, but it's just another example, another example of we don't matter. You know what and, I mean? Well, I also th I think that, look, that's fair because obviously there's going to be fans that bought tickets that, to go see LeBron that night, whatever night that is. But I, I get that, and you don't want to belittle that. But I also think, Rob, LeBron's history, and even, shoot, recent history, like last year and this year, of playing as much as he could. He's not like a Kawhi or some of these other guys who have, you know, just made a mockery of the regular seasons by taking so many games off. And so I think people might look at that and, like you said, and the family situation. But, like, just low management, I'm not trying to – I'm not dismissing the concerns about it because I hate it. And tonight, you heard us when Steve DeSager was saying Luka is out and, and Wimby is out and their injuries, but – I. 
I just hate to see any of this. Like, if you're not, you know, injured to the point where you can't play, then you should be out there. It just playing. happens a lot. And yeah, that's it's the happening problem. too it much. Happen, it happens a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And so, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm cool with LeBron doing this. You're you got some issues with it. Let's throw it out to the uh, listeners. Ima- oh yeah. Oh wait. And I forgot to talk about um Bronny Williams. I mean Bronny. Uh, Bronny James. But that's for a little skit. I, I should have told y'all about that in the beginning. Two, Bronny James. Uh, this gonna be a video about Bronny James too because you know he had a heart um the, the heart um uh, it was like a heart attack, cardiac arrest, and so he's back. And he's back playing at U- USC, and you know, um, you know, like I said, he he back, so he's gonna play too. So Mikey Williams and Bronny James about to come back and play for college. So this deal will be about Mikey Williams and Bronny James. So I just have to remember to let to make y'all, um, you know, what I'm saying, see all the shit was going on, man. Um, so I'm glad Bronny James back too, man. All right, back. So y'all see from the video, man, Bronny James, man. Um, that cardiac arrest almost took him out. Um, we don't see um multiple basketball players, football players, soccer players, any, all types of players die from heart attacks. Now, at first, a lot of people were saying because it was because of the jab, which uh, some of them was because of the jab. But um, you know who knows anymore, man? That jab took a lot of people out. But you know. Uh, Unfortunately, I mean, I'm, I'm glad. Unfortunately, I'm glad that a lot of people didn't get in, didn't, didn't let that happen to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Brian James, man, um, he, he, um, uh, he's finally back playing with USC. Um, he's practicing and he's getting better. You dig? Um, his dad is ready. To, LeBron James is ready to come, go back to one of his big first basketball games, man. T- t- if Bronny James wouldn't be able to play basketball, man, that would have been a big impact to the NBA. Like, cause you just be honest, man. A lot of people waiting to see Bronny James and Bryce James go to the, the NBA. Uh, and you know, you know, Le- Bronny James probably be the next up for Mike for LeBron James and shit. So when that time he got when he had that cardiac arrest, it knocked a lot of people off guard. Cause like, damn, how the fuck did um Bronny James get injured like that? You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the doc, they said they performed surgery and, you know, sometimes, you know, it's off the stress and you push your body to limits and shit, man. And, yeah, but I'm glad he, he caught it now. Before, you know, he came to the NBA and he could have, like, died on, on the NBA court and shit, man, from playing too hard and shit, man. You know, people, some people, they, they, they play so fucking hard and, you know, they don't be noticing when their body is about to give out. You know what I'm saying? And it, it is crazy. Like I said, man, it's crazy because... These players who be getting injured and, 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 and sick and shit, they be having some of the top tier doctors. They have some of the top tier doctors. They have some of the top tier doctors, some of the top tier eating plans. They got some of the top tier everything. How the fuck are these niggas getting sick and injured like this? So it just shows you, man, sometimes it's just you can have all the goddamn money on. But if you're buying out the par, you're, you're buying out the par. You know what I'm saying? And that that's kind of what happened to Bronny James. His body was not off the par and he did. He, he almost died on the court, but um, thank God he came back too, man. So, you know, everything happened for a reason. All this situation between Mikey Williams and Bronny James to make these niggas stronger, you know what I'm saying? Um, it could have went worse for Bronny James. Bronny James could have been paralyzed, you know what I'm saying, or in a, com- in a coma. And, you know, it, it would have been like that. And, you know, he wouldn't be playing in the NBA. We'd be waiting for Bryce James and shit, man. But he's back. You know what I'm saying? And he playing for the U- and he know he's back out church working out with USC, which we like to see. That's what some that the sports analyst was talking about too. How LeBron James and them was gonna miss a day out for um Ronnie James um um game and shit. Which hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. But hey, Mikey Williams, man, we're happy for Mikey Williams too, man. Mikey Williams, man, like we was all waiting to see what's gonna happen with him too, like. When that situation, when when the court came out, they said he won, man. I was like, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, man. They try to take that nigga out too, man. But hey, like it's like I said, man. Sometimes be your own motherfucking choices that that fuck you over too, man. You know, you let the people into your life, and you people they 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 play on your mindset, man. And that's how it be sometimes, man. 
And so, the only thing about this court shit, man, sometimes, you know, it makes it kind of harder for you to get drafted because, you know, you already have, like, legal issues and you can't, and, you, and all this shit that's, that's, that's meant to, like, you know what I'm saying? It'll make it kind of hard for you to get drafted because the, the team already looking to see, like, damn, okay, he already going through all this shit. You did like, it's going to be way easier for J Bronny James, but, 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 but before it might be because Bronny James got LeBron James in the league, you know what I'm saying? He like the post child at that point. Mikey Wayne, he like the golden boy, but at the, time, at the same time, he fucking up too. Like Mike, so Brian Jane like the the the, uh, the poster child, and and Mikey Wayne the golden boy. So it's like you know, each player got a, a high tremendous upside. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, with Mike with Brian Jane being the poster, he's gonna have a more chance to make it to any team he wants. You know what I'm saying? Like he probably can even get drafted to the Lakers if he said, hey. I don't want to get drafted to the motherfucking Lakers. No other team draft me. The fuck is you talking about? He probably could get drafted to the Lakers. He probably, if he get drafted like to like the 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 higher pick, the 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 fifteenth, the twenty first pick, wherever pick, the second round, wherever. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers probably pick him up. You know what I'm saying? Cause off the strength. But hey, like I was saying, man, when you know these 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 unforeseen incidents. Can really call people they lie, you know what I'm saying? Michael Williams could have ended his career like that off of shooting. Brian James' career and life, both both of their lives could be ended off of motherfucking. Just, well, it wasn't even. Well, it kind of can't be Brian's decision because just, Brian, he could have decided not to play as hard or put that much work in, but eventually it probably would have happened because, you know what I'm saying, off of body and shit, man. So, you know, sometimes when your body not fucking with you, it's not fucking. You know what I'm saying? And when your arm, um, and when you gotta go to the doctor, you gotta go to the doctor, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you wanna play so hard. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? When you an athlete, or when you just a baller, nigga, you wanna play almost every fucking day. Eight, nine hours a day. 30, 30 hours. Nigga, you be at the crib shooting around, hooping. You be ho hooping everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bronny got a chance to make millions and millions of dollars. And it's like they already rich. Both of them are already rich. So it's like, bruh. As far as trying to have a, a, a work career, they don't really need one. So all the time they're they not playing basketball or doing anything. Shit, they could be just hooping. Or doing whatever the fuck they want to. You know what I'm saying? They're just the, the, the benefits of, of them already having the success they got. You know what I'm saying? And both of them will make an upside to the NBA as far as making money on it. Like, all the NBA teams... Whoever, which uh, every team get e either one will make money off the off of the player because you know they big name players. I'm like a mellow ball type shit, man. Um, um, the mellow ball man, we see his upside. He's doing good. He's just kind of getting injured a lot. So hopefully, Mikey Williams can have the same upside and Bronny James. You know what I'm saying? Um, the way Bronny James and built his career up, his, his his he said he want to play like Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? So. As far as the shooting and the, like he always like a different player than LeBron James. He's not as big as little. I think he's Mike. Bronny James is only like 6'3". His little brother is, is taller than him. But the thing about Bronny Bryce James, he's not bulky. He like skinny. Like LeBron James is just a freak of nature. You know what I'm saying? At that point, we just got to call it what it is. Bronny James is just a freak of nature. This nigga's 6'8", 230, pure muscle. You know what I'm saying? Brian James not built like that. He's only 6'3", probably a solid 180. You know what I'm saying? On a good day, 170, 180. Between that range, and it's just like, Bryce James might be, maybe might be skinnier than that nigga. I don't fucking know. He like 6'5", six, 6'4", six, 6'6". Six, six. So it's just like, the jeans was genie, but it wasn't genie like LeBron James was genie. If, if LeBron James, if this nigga would've came out to be like, Ball like like motherfucking Wimby height nigga, a ball ball height nigga. <laughs> they would have been over for the NBA. They were like, what the fuck? What the fuck is you doing? <laughs> they would have been over for the NBA, but you know how that goes, man. Um, Mikey Win, man, you know, Mikey Win to to y'all, y'all. Mikey Win about six three two, and he could dunk. All all of them could dunk. So you know, we just waiting for the, the uh they they college year, you know. Uh, Mikey's in Memphis, so he's getting ready for his team. We don't know if he's going to play this year. Um, Brian James, you know, we getting ready for um, him to play. So, hey, 
We getting ready, man. All this shit is out the way for both of them. You know what I'm saying? The doctor's out the way for Bonnie. The court is out the way for the um Mike. He might got the other shit he gotta do, and Bonnie might got the other shit he gotta do too. But for both of them, the shit is out the way. They can just focus on basketball and just leave the other shit alone. And so, hey man, say man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Kevin, two times, option for the one time, one time. Make sure you fuck with your boy. Um, you know we we'll keep on putting out the heat, man. No side shit, man. Keep the gang lit, man. Gang, 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 gang. So you know what I'm saying? shit. gang out this bitch. Gang, gang. Hey, Dad. You know that when we link up, that this shit be legendary. You know this is instrumental. You the engineer on it, so hold that everywhere.